Michael Kazin, if we could, let's start by uh, defining some terms, beginning with populism. In your new book, American Dreamers, How the Left Changed a Nation, what does populism mean? Well, populism can mean lots of different things. Um, originally, it was a radical movement, mostly of small farmers, also of uh, skilled workers, mostly in the South and the West, uh, who really demanded that the growing monopolization of the American economy be rolled back, either to restore an economy of small business or uh, and sometimes also to empower government to um, take over the railroads, take over the telephone system, which was just coming online at the time. It was really the leading radical movement of the late 19th century. Also, of course, now we talk about populism with a small p as you know, a kind of language uh, that politicians and other people use to try to set the small elite, the, the, the great majority of the people against a small, greedy elite. Uh, but the original populism was a radical movement. Who were some well-known American populists in our past? Um, Tom Watson, who was uh, very well known at the time. Uh, he ran for president a couple of times on the People's Party ticket. Uh, he was later on a senator from Georgia. Uh, William Jennings Bryan was not a radical. He was a Democrat, but uh, he, was, uh, he had the populist nomination in the 1890s, and he gave some of these most powerful populist speeches of the 1890s, calling uh, for people to liberate themselves from the gold standard, uh, for the producing masses of the world to free themselves from the Bank of England and so forth. Um, and also, there were some unusual people who, unusual in the sense that we don't usually think of them as populists, one of the leading temperance uh, organizers in America, uh, Francis Willard, the head of the WCTU, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, was also a big supporter of populism. She was a Christian socialist, in fact. Uh, so those are some of the, the leading figures of the time. What do you mean when you talk about radicalism? Well, radical to me goes back to the, the Latin uh, derivation of that word, radix, that is go to the root of the problems of a society. So radicals believe in transforming society pretty utterly, uh, the structures of society, not just making reforms here and there to, in a basically just system. Radicals believe in tearing up that system, nonviolently in most cases, but sometimes using violence as well. Who were some of the famous radicalists? in our history and today? Um, not many famous ones today. The radical movement has shrunk, though Occupy Wall Street, I think, is, uh, is the beginnings of the sprouts of a new kind of radical movement, but uh, they purposely don't have any leaders. They are against really having big leaders. But um, uh, in our history, people like Eugene Debs, who ran five times for president on the Socialist Party ticket, was a very important radical. Uh, there are many cultural figures who are important radicals too. I talk about in American Dreamers who had a lot of impact, I think, on the country. Woody Guthrie, uh, who wrote This Land is Your Land, was probably a member of the Communist Party when he wrote that song. Uh, not what you school children hear when they, when they sing this song. Um, um, there were other figures like, I, I think Martin Luther King Jr. was a radical. He called himself a democratic socialist. Uh, he definitely wanted a system that was much more uh, friendly to uh, the poor and uh, workers uh, than to people who owned uh, uh, factories and, uh, uh, and companies. Um, and um, in fact, his program uh, would now be attacked by most Democrats and by most Republicans as being far too radical. He wanted guaranteed jobs. He wanted guaranteed uh, income. He wanted uh, government-sponsored health insurance. Um, and also he wanted uh, American uh, strength overseas to be rolled back uh, uh, almost as much as Ron Paul does. Uh, so uh, if you think about socialists like Debs, a, in some ways private socialist like King, of course we honor with a national holiday. Um, you think about cultural figures like Woody Guthrie, um, like Dr. Zeus, who actually I write about in the book, was uh, a, um, a member of the Popular Front uh, in the 1930s and 40s, this uh, cultural formation that was spawned by the Communist Party but not controlled by it. Figures like this add up to, a, you know, I think a pretty impressive uh, list of people, even though their influence on our politics has not been as powerful as their influence on our culture. What does the term progressivism mean? Uh, it can mean, again, lots of different things. Uh, the original meaning of the term, uh, it was an ideology, uh, um, a faith, if you will, of a lot of reformers in the early part of the 20th century. Um, 
people like Robert La Follette, like Theodore Roosevelt, like Woodrow Wilson, like Jane Addams, the great uh, uh, social reformer. People who believed that American society was uh, had become less democratic and less efficient uh, with the rise of big business, um, uh, and they wanted to adjust uh, the structures of society so they would serve the majority of the people better. Um, the progressive era, uh, led by progressives, of course, um, uh, for the, we, we have to thank for that for the progressives things like the Federal Reserve System. Uh, some government uh, regulation of banking and finance in this country, uh, the 16th, 17th, and 18th Amendments for uh, popular election of senators, for the income tax, uh, and for prohibition as well, which was seen as a progressive measure at the time to moralize society, to make Americans, force Americans to be um, more self-disciplined in their, in their leisure time. Um, so uh, progressives were reformers. They were what we now think of as liberals, but liberals of a different kind than most liberals now. Most liberals now would not support prohibition, <laughs> for example. In fact, I can hard to think of any liberal who would support prohibition. Uh, Michael Kazin, in American Dreamers, you say that this book was inspired by Dr. Seuss. What do you mean by that? Yeah, that was a little bit of a, <laughs> uh, you know, sort of as an author trying to draw people in uh, to the argument. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, I, I loved Dr. Seuss books when I was a child. Uh, my mother read them to me and then uh, my children now who are grown up in their 20s, I read those books to them as well uh, when they were growing up. And I began to think, um, you know, in 2000 when I first began to think about this book, uh, George Bush had just been elected, uh, at least the Supreme Court said he was elected. Um, and of course he was, he did become president. Um, and uh, I was beginning to think, well, you know, what has the influence of the left been in America? I was kind of dispirited at the time as a person who didn't vote for George W. Bush. And I began to think, who are the influential leftists in American history? And in fact, if you look at uh, a lot of Dr. Zeus's books, uh, some of the better known ones, in fact, uh, Yertle the Turtle, uh, the Butter Battle book, uh, the Sneetches, um, the Lorax, these are um, very skillful works of political agitation. Some people might even call it propaganda. Uh, they're funny, um, they're, they take off after people who are um, arrogant, um, who don't like uh, people of a different race, uh, who want to despoil the environment, like in the Lorax. Um, there are books really which uh, take a stand uh, in the traditional way the left in America has always taken a stand for the underdog, uh, for uh, minorities who are being oppressed by the majority. Um, and so I began to think, well, Dr. Zeus is sort of, for most people, not recognized as a leftist. Uh, and perhaps his influence in a sort of surreptitious, almost uh, subversive, you might say, way on American thinking uh, might be um, a key to a common theme for a lot of, of American radicals, uh, like Woody Guthrie, for example, uh, who we don't think about as being a leftist, you know. Um, but in fact, I think he was clearly a very important part of the left uh, in his time, 1930s and 1940s and had an important impact, sometimes indirectly, on American thinking. Um, and so that is the theme of the book, really, that the left changed the nation, as the subtitle has it, not by um, instituting nationalization of major industries, uh, not by um, having workers in control of their factories, uh, not by uh, having a radical third party, which has any, uh, any strength, any lasting power, but by helping to change the attitudes of Americans, how we think about rights, how we think about social tolerance, how we think about um, you know, what's, what's just uh, in, in American life. Uh, and so that's, that's really the argument of the book. When you think about the American left today, when did it emerge and what kind of power does it have today? Yeah, today. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it emerged about 200 years ago, actually. Uh, I start the book with uh, three documents written in uh, 1829. Uh, I won't go into details about them, but basically one was a, t a document by a black abolitionist, uh, one was an argument by a, uh, a leading feminist at the time, and one was a document by a, a radical artisan, a radical craftsman. And so they, they are documents which really at the beginning of the movements for women's equality, uh, for racial equality, and for uh, uh, social justice at the workplace. Um, and I think it's only in the 1820s that you begin to have mass movements. And that, in order to have a left, or for that matter, to have a 
grassroots conservative movement. You have to have a movement. You have to have a lot of people who dedicate their lives, at least a large portion of their lives, to, to trying to change society um, in the way.